Hello everyone. Uh, this is a quick look at Bayala the game, uh, which I also featured in my recent arrivals video. Now, this game is based on Bayala the movie and the associated toys and figurines manufactured by the Schleich company in Germany. The origin story of Bayala uh, struck me as pretty stereotypical for this type of tale. And finally, we arrive in the whimsical and quaint world of Bayala. You can see straight away how it would be very appealing to smaller children. And here is our elven protagonist called Sura. By collecting these orbs from the flowers, you can uh, rack up uh, nice amounts to later redeem for uh, stickers in the collection book. Uh, the world is initially very much gated. Uh, you can only move around in a linear fashion. As quests come in, so the world slowly opens up. I noticed straight away how stiff the character model looks and how ungainly the movements are in animation. The game was built on the Unity engine. I don't know which version, but I have to say the game looks rather dated and the motion controls are clunky by modern standards. Our first dialogue also happens to be uh, one of the better and funnier ones. I can now proceed uh, via this portal to the first hub area. And this method of moving around the world of Bayala uh, via these portals is going to be a one major criticism I have. Uh, you will see a bit more of that later on. Uh, this central place serves really only as a delivery mechanism uh, for the various quests that Sura has to undertake. Uh, she now gets her first one and you will see straight away that it is a pretty tedious and somewhat boring one. Uh, via the quest log uh, we can check what it is we have to do. And uh, back we go via the portal. Now you see the mechanism by which the additional previously gated areas are unlocked and we have to go through another ring to get into the area where we need to carry out the quest. I think you might begin to see what it is I mean. So here we um, quickly have to scoop up the books and uh, tidy them up. There really isn't much to it and I wouldn't exactly call it exciting work. Uh, the jumping is actually not too bad in terms of uh, controls and floatiness, but the major drawback is that you don't have a camera at all. The right stick on your controller is completely useless. There is no camera to be seen anywhere. And in a 3D world, that later on does become important when you're trying to judge depth for the trickier and more demanding jumps. And this was the first block we had to move into position to be able to get the exit ring appear. Every time you've completed a job, you have to find a way out of the area, retracing your steps to get back to the hub. This is, of course, incredibly tedious. Uh, you receive your reward, uh, lots and lots of orbs, and you then have to proceed on to the next quest. There is an overworld map, but the problem with the area access design is that you have a growing profusion of portals and rings for sub areas, which have no way of being identified either via color or icon 
or even a tax designation. Uh, so in the end, you find yourself uh, circling around trying to find the one ring that will get you to the area you want, especially since uh, backtracking would be quite common in this game for completing a collection of items. Uh, so that strikes me as a particularly poorly implemented user interface. I need to mention that you are only seeing the very beginning of the game. Unfortunately, my recording cut off too early. Uh, the game uh, does increase in uh, difficulty and, and challenge a bit, and puzzles that appear later are spatial and uh, do provide a little bit of a challenge, as you can see here. Uh, moving rocks to access um, certain areas is quite a common mechanism. Uh, there are also various mini-games that are introduced throughout the game, uh, so the developer hasn't skimped. I wouldn't say that. Uh, my criticism comes from the overall dated design and user interface of this game, uh, coupled with the pretty pedestrian dialogue and a game structure that relies incredibly heavily on being quest driven uh, one after the other uh, so i think what we're really looking at here is a rather valuable ip when you look at the schleich toys and uh, figurines in europe in particular they are very highly regarded there and apparently although i've never seen one of the figures they appear to be very well made and with a very nice finish the problem is that the game is not really delivering on the expectation of that high um, quality. I think it's really disappointing because I can see the potential of this IP, but not in this realization. They really would need to up the um, technical resources and competency. Uh, quite significantly uh, to produce a game that would capture a modern young audience's attention. Due to copyright, I can't show you an animated sequence which is clearly taken straight from the movie. And I think that little sequence shows the potential that is there. There's a very nice segue from the animation into the actual gameplay if they had aimed higher to produce a game that maybe comes a lot closer to the standard of the animated movie and the fluidity of motion then i think we would have looked at something quite different and far more appealing